I am in the home of my great grandparents' house. I bought this house in 2020. It's a, an amazing story. It had been in our family since like 1910 till about 2000. And then we had to sell it for 20 years and then I got it back. I ended up buying it when it became available for sale in 2020. It's a huge leap of faith and so many different layers to this. First off, this house has been sort of like a respite place for our entire family. It was my great grandparents' home. My mother was a single mom from the time I was nine years old and this was her grandparents' house. My grandparents were married in the very front room of this house. And my great grandparents had like seven girls and two boys. And so this house was very active. It's that kind of house that you just always remember and you always think about. All of your cousins are the same way. Your my mother's cousins feel the same way. It's the ha house had to be sold because my great aunt and uncle who had lived in this house their entire life, they never got married. They we're like in their 90s and nobody, like they needed to sell it because to take care of like debt and all of that. And none of us lived nearby. My mother kind of regretted selling it for years. She ended up dying, never getting able to be back into her family home. When she was passing away, she was like, imagining she was here. When she died, I was in the room and I went back to sleep after she passed away. Yeah, I know that sounds strange, but it was just like almost like otherworldly peaceful in that room. And I had this vision that she was greeted in this home by her ancestors. And at the time when I had this vision, somebody else owned the house and it's nowhere near basically where I live. This is in Illinois and I live in Florida. So I had this vision that she was greeted by all of my relatives, actually right in that spot right there. Standing here like this and my mother and all of my great aunts and uncles were there greeting her. Out this back here was like almost like a prayer portal. It was bizarre. It was like people were like praising God and it was just so special. Obviously we were grieving when my mother passed away and we came up for a visit here like four months after she passed. And because this is such a special house, I had seen the visions and everything. We walked in front of the house. My sister and I stood in front of the house on the sidewalk there, like on the sidewalk there. And we wanted to get our picture taken and just say a prayer. People were living in this house at the time when we were out there. And I said this prayer, I was like, God, just thank you for this home. Just thank you that our family had it for a hundred years. And thank you that we were ever able to have it at all. It was so wild because my sister was like, is the owner gonna come out? Are they gonna be upset that we're getting a picture taken in front of the house? And I was like, our family history is in this house. Our family owned this house for almost a hundred years. This is our ancestral home. We deserve a picture. Like we have authority on this land. The irony or the coincidence is that literally two weeks after I said that prayer, not intending to ever buy this house, the house became available for the first time in 20 years. That was in 2020. I battled like, God, do you want me to buy it? Eventually, I ended up buying it and I walked into that room where my grandparents were married in 1925. I walked in that room with myself, my daughter, which was their, would be their great granddaughter, and three of my cousins on their 95th wedding anniversary. That was the day that I closed. And my mother would never get the chance to be back in this house, even though she imagined that she was. All she ever wanted was to be in this house again. It's been a few years since then. I have the house. It's like everybody who comes into this house or who has ever, let's say was raised in this house or her, whose parents or grandparents were raised in this house just feels so special. Today, I was sitting here kind of minding my own business because I'm here for, you know, on and off for the summer. Remember, my mother could never come back into this home because she passed away before we had it back. And it was one of her greatest sadnesses. Sadnesses? Sorry for the grammar. I get a knock on the door today and it was one of her cousins who lives in Colorado. He's 91 years old. I was so taken aback, I'm sorry, I forgot to take video. But he comes into the house, his name's Deany, Dean. We call him Deany because his dad was Dean. And he walks in this house like he was five. So excited, pointing out different rooms. Oh my goodness, that's the room where grandma slept. That's the room where I'm sleeping now. So my great grandmother slept in that room. Oh my goodness, where's the playhouse? Sorry, they took it down. 
Oh my goodness, I remember playing a jam session over here by the piano. I have a grandpa, your mom, Shirley, playing violin. I was playing bass. And Kathy, that was be his aunt Kathy, my great aunt, on piano. Oh my gosh, I remember my great grandfather. I remember my grandfather and I carving wood to create our own bass guitars and cellos. And then I showed him this pattern that I found up in the garage of a bass guitar. So he was telling me about how he and my great grandfather, which was his grandfather, would carve bass guitars and cellos. And I told him, oh my gosh, I found the pattern for that in the garage. I showed him this, which is a pattern for it. I showed him all of these National Geographics, which still here, even though somebody lived here for 20 years. It, he's 91 years old. And I took a picture right here. This is my great grandmother, his grandmother, who he said, oh my gosh, grandma used to live there and she died over there. My great grandfather or his grandfather was the one he played bass with. And then, then what got me is him talking about my mom, Shirley, who was like his best friend, but who he hadn't seen in years. And it just made me really emotional. And I wanted to share this with you just because, just remember your ancestors. There were people before you, grandparents, great-grandparents, cousins. There's some special memories that can still be alive. Like I literally was so touched by him coming and it just confirmed to me how important it was that I bought this house in the first place to buy back a great-grandparent's home. God, this was not expected. It was not on my list of what to do. Even though there's tons of work to do, there's prayers that I have for being able to have the money to take care of it. He just knocked on the door and blew my mind. When he left, I literally cried. Like I had to go back and put some, kind of fix my face <laughs> because I was just so taken aback by the sweetness of it, that you can be 91 years old and there's something about walking back into your grandparents' home and looking at the banister that you used to slide down, looking at the kitchen and out the window, going in the back, like he had so much energy. The fact that he got to step back in here one more time in his life, he will probably not be back here ever again. He hasn't been here in 40 years. And the fact that I bought this house opened up a door for him to be able to experience something that my mother never got to do but wanted to do so desperately. She just wanted back in this house. She wanted this house back in the family. So all of this to say, if you have an opportunity to take a leap of faith of something that's so special, but seems so out of context and so, you know, different, just do it. Just do it because you may not be touching just your life. It may impact so many others. And this is what I live for. The fact that I bought this house and there are cousins, extended cousins that walk into this house like they own the place. They're so proud and they know this house and they tell stories about it. And God, I'm so grateful for the synergy of the ages and the uniqueness of having a family home. Buy back the family home, claim the land that you want and glorify God and honor your ancestors. That's it. I just had to tell the story because it was so special of him just walking in and 91 years old being like a five-year-old. Subscribe to Hot for History. I like to share some historic facts that I bet your history teacher would never dare to teach you.